we have experienced Christmas Eve into Christmas morning, the worst natural disaster in living memory. It has affected the northern half of St. Vincent. People are suffering. No question about it. Families which have been vulnerable within 24 hours have descended not just into poverty but into indigence and those who are indigent are waiting for our help. Our first task is to take care of people's immediate needs. By Tuesday, Wednesday hopefully, 85% of the country will have water. But large numbers of persons who got up this morning had no water to drink or to bathe it. Over 300 persons are hopeless. We have in the shelters some 240. But the numbers of persons who are living in accommodation is wholly unsatisfactory. Their persons, for one reason or the other, do not want to go to emergency shelters. In areas of the countryside, the mud has been cleaned and some people are sleeping on cardboard. It is a difficult time and people are suffering. So we have two St. Vincent and the Grenadines. One, which is normal, and the other one, which is anguished. The remarkable thing is that our people have responded with such resilience and stoicism. The sharing which has taken place is extensive and commendable. I see in this disaster the seeds of a new St. Vincent and the Grenadines, different and better. Across this country, people have lost everything, every single I am not talking yet about the physical infrastructure. We need to know from each home, each household, how many persons are residing in the households. The ages, how many are children. What is the damage done to the house? What is the damage done to your fittings, your furnishings, if you lost a fowl cock, I need to know. You lose a sheep or a goat, because these are means by which people make their livelihood. We need to know 
those who have water and those who do not have water. Those who are suffering from high blood pressure and who have been affected even worse as a consequence of high blood pressure. The community health systems must act with urgency. We are not in normal times. Now, we have declared a level 2 disaster and for particular areas we have declared disaster zones under the law. We have not declared a nationwide disaster because there is not a nationwide disaster. And to say that there is a nationwide disaster would have an implication which would not be in our own interest. First of all, it would not be true. And secondly, if we have a nationwide disaster, it would mean that tourists would not want to come. We can't go to church and sing blessed assurance, but not giving an assurance in practical terms to our neighbor. We got to do it. And we have to use this to rise and be stronger than ever. I can't wait on the European Union. I can't wait on the Caribbean Development Bank. When you had it, the April 2011 floods and this one bigger than both of those put together on top of what has happened with the World Trade Organization and the challenges to our preferential market in the United Kingdom for bananas reducing those preferences to near zero and Baiko and the world economic crisis which is continuing I know that a lot of our people feel weary but you can't give up we have to renew ourselves like eagles we have to hold each other's hand in partnership we have weathered difficulties in the past and emerged triumphant. We will do so again with God's blessing. And I want to appeal to those particularly who use the internet especially some who are here and who are overseas who in their state of idleness rather than write things about which they do not know and seek to sow seeds of discord and to build pessimism please call your banker Take an overdraft like I did this morning. Organize in your neighborhood to get some supplies. Help. Please help. Don't just talk and create a lot of dissension. Let us get on with the business of rebuilding St. Vincent and the Grenadines. promise the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, especially those who are now suffering, that this government, I personally, would be there to help you. And we 
have to work together. For those who have lost loved ones, I extend my sympathy again. Condolences. I've seen the families of six of the nine. I hope between today and tomorrow to see the families of the other three. I've given instructions to the cabinet secretary that all persons who have died during the storm would be buried at the expense of the state. I don't want the problem of the pain and suffering of the death to be added to that, the cost of a funeral. So we ease that burden. And I say to them, prayer helps. God does not give us more than we can bear. 